D&D Dark Alliance is a third-person ARPG that was released on June 21st, 2021 by Wizards of the Coast on PC, Xbox, PS4, and the next-gen consoles. This was supposed to be the spiritual successor to the two Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance games, according to Gamer Rant. This game has received very mixed reviews from various different sources. IGN gave it a 4 out of 10, PC Gamer gave it an 82%, and Metascore was a 53. This prompted the makers of the game Took Games to promise it to receive future updates and improvements. And to put those scores into perspective, the Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance game got 11 points higher on Metacritic and five points higher on the user score for Metacritic from 3.3 to 8.3, which is a massive jump. So why do these reviews turn out to be so mixed? Is this game inherently bad? Is it underwhelming? Are there any game breaking bugs? Does it not live up to the gold standard of D&D? Well, you are about to find out. My name is Adam from Brawby Got This, and today we start our journey in the gaming world with a brand new series to find the worst RPG possible that has ever been made. This is a new series inspired by Josh Strive Hayes' worst MMO RPG game series. So on this quest to find the worst RPG ever, we will start with D&D Dark Alliance. Again, a massive shout out to my patrons and YouTube members. I'll have more on that at the end of the video. D&D is something that is fairly new to me as I started playing the tabletop version just about six months ago with a friend group IRL. It has been one of the most enjoyable experiences when it comes to gaming that I've ever had. So trying out Dark Alliance was pretty exciting to me, even though I had heard of some of the mixed reviews. So I downloaded Dark Alliance from Game Pass instead of buying it. I also had a free two month Game Pass, so that was kind of nice. It, it isn't too big of a download coming in under 50 gigs, if I can recall, and I'm comparing that to like Call of Duty, but to me 50 gigs wasn't too bad. I highly recommend you do it through Game Pass rather than buy it, mainly because of reasons to be shown here very shortly. If you don't do that, it will set you back $29.99 US dollars at retail. But anyways, I get it downloaded and I load into the game and there is a cutscene. Drizzed to Worden, the drow outcast. Few can match his deadly speed. He could be the key to everything. They care for each other. Something to be exploited, perhaps. But their bond is strong. Regardless, they fail to secure the shard from that fool, Kessel. It's out there. Exposed. For the taking. And now, it will be mine. 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 I really have no idea what's going on, and I had no idea besides who any of these characters were except for Dritzt because I've seen his magic card in the release of the set last year, D&D lore, so these villains, I also have no idea who they are. But after that's over, I get to the character select screen and BAM! hit with our first bug of the playthrough. I can't see what the character even looks like. I thought this was part of the game, and I was thinking to myself, this is a weird way to start an ARPG, a game based off of customizing and making your character look stronger. But anyways, I got through that, and I see that there are only four characters to choose from, except from an expansion slot character. There's Dritzt, who is a rogue type class, so he's like a duelist assassin. Caddy Bree, who is a fighter, their role is a archer and sniper. Wolfgar is a barbarian who is an assault shock trooper. And Bruner is a fighter as well, so it's a tank uh, class. So as soon as I do this, I pick my barbarian character. The visuals, when I get in the game, look stunning. I love the lighting and it just looks fantastic. I'm led to try the tutorial out, which I do, and it is set up like Diablo where you have acts and you have to progress through them. Now we drop into the tutorial and the basic attacks and fighting styles are totally hold to us. We start to light and heavy attack essentially and it feels decent to start off and it has us do some ranged attack which feels super clunky. And let's just take a moment and talk about how so many games default controls
spells are just so weird and they make no sense at all. Binding a range attack to the control key just makes no logical sense to me. But combat goes on longer and I learn how to do combos, but again, it's a little wonky because it wants me to do a four hit combo, but these enemies take only two to three hits to kill, so you have to chain them to other enemies. Then it has me, like I said, try ranged attacking and just it just feels clunky. I'm a two-handed hammer wielding Chad. I don't need to stand there and throw bananas at targets. I need to paste them. I then learn to jump with just space, which makes sense to me, and evade is the C key, which again feels pretty decently natural. Now pairing is just weird to me. Pairing was tab, and in a PC game, I have not used tab as parry most of the time. Usually block to me makes sense on the right click on the mouse. Right now, putting your fingers on WASD and somehow hitting tab to block just doesn't work. Also, the timing of the parry was really hard for me to time. Sometimes it felt like I timed it right, but I didn't. And other times it had to be a split second before. It kind of reminds me of like kind of like the Batman series or like the Shadow of War or Mordor series. It just didn't feel good though, but those did feel good in those games. Anyways though, we trudged through this and got to the next phase the tutorial the worst part lock on warning for motion sickness here lock on was disorienting that i was feeling sick after doing it it shakes the screen and it's clunky every time you move forward it resets the screen it doesn't seem to work right and don't worry later i try using it again and turn camera shake off and it still makes me feel sick i am literally feeling queasy watching my playback right now and i don't normally get sick from games but this was agonizing this is something that will plague us but anyways, after this sickening moment, I get to performing my ultimate and it's pretty amazing, I will say. I spin around and I melt some enemies. I am then ready to start doing missions and leave the tutorial. But wait, this doesn't seem right. I encounter massive bug number two. It kicked me to character select screen and it didn't register that I completed the tutorial. At this point, I am very confused. I don't know if it's making me play through every class before I can progress. So I try again and I am met with the same issue. Character screen again. <sighs> At this point, I am 25 minutes into my playthrough and I am getting a little annoyed. How is this still a bug almost a year after the game releases? I search online to find answers to anyone that has any solutions to this and I literally can't find a single article with players having this issue. But I do stumble upon an article on Gamer Revolution on how there is a game breaking bug of characters in progress being stopped and characters being completely wiped. The progress stopping bug has been patched, but from my research, it looks like there is no known solution to the character wipe bug. This is a massive problem. It's almost a year since the game has been released and you're telling me I can't even get past the tutorial and I have a chance of sinking hundreds of hours into an ARPG and that character will be potentially wiped without any solution. Things are not really looking up from here. So I try to do this one more time. I pick Dritzt, who is like again the rogue, and it ends up kicking me again. Oh, kick to character select. Cool. At this time, I'm nearly 40 minutes in and I'm about to give up. But since I'm doing a video on this, I try to give it the old resetting everything, turning everything back on and off. It's the old IT trick. You turn it off, you turn it back on to see if it works. So I reset the game and I relaunch. And to my wandering eyes appear four shiny characters and one DLC character that I can't play and I'm finally able to see the characters. I also am then able to go to the mission board and it allows me to recognize that I don't need to do the tutorial. It was optional before, but it it wouldn't let me do other missions but finally i can do another mission and i finally get to play the game after 40 something minutes but let me stop us here a second i can't stress this enough on how bad this bug is the first hour to two hours of gameplay for a game is a make or break situation. If I wasn't a content creator trying to give this a full try and someone that just wanted to pick this up casually was trying to play this, most times that player isn't going to restart the game like I did. If you try to do the tutorial three times and it doesn't let you progress, you don't find any articles on how to fix it, you may just uninstall especially if it was a free game for you. That is just so bad. It is essentially game killing. So we've been talking about this RPG and how it doesn't really work. And I just wanna talk to you about something that does work and that is the Ridge 
Wallet. This is the sponsor of our video today, and I absolutely love my Ridge Wallet. You guys have seen it many times. I love the color and style that I have, the Damascus Steel style. I love that it holds up to 12 cards and it has a cash strap. It, I can take this anywhere, and it has RFID blocking technology, which prevents digital pickpocketers. Uh, I absolutely love this, and right now there's a Father's Day special to where you can get 15% off your order at checkout if you use my code BRAWRIDGE. So check that out in the description and comment section. Uh, but thank you again to the Ridge Wallet for sponsoring this video. Anyways, though, we get to the interface of the difficulty and we see the different levels and rewards. And I will say that the UI in this game is pretty clean. That's something I really like about games and is a big feature for me. So what I did is, is I clicked Companions of Icewind Dale and I was off to start my first quest. The cutscene plays and honestly, the audio and the cutscene voice acting was pretty solid. I didn't have any complaints about it. But now that we are loaded into the dungeon and the visuals that uh, look solid, I pick up some random loot and start crushing rocks to get crystals. This was pretty cool. Another in-game tutorial pops up. I immediately almost die from ice and open a chest and the movement felt a little weird when that happened, but I realized it's because I didn't know what the warmth mechanic was. But one minute in and I have already drank two of my potions. It's not a great start for me. I'm crushing everything in my path and I have my first combat encounter. Combat starts out really fun actually. We kill the first couple of enemies and then they are, we are met with a really cool mechanic in my opinion, the short rest. Short rests in IRL D&D or tabletop D&D is essentially rests that help you restore certain things for each of your party members. There are also long rests in D&D as well, but short rests in this game are optional just like in D&D. But if you take a short rest, you refill your consumables in this game, you get a checkpoint and you use an item loot bonus. But if you don't take your short rest, you increase the loot rarity, which I think was pretty cool. So like a Chad gamer myself, I don't rest, I don't need it, I increase the rarity. We continue in the dungeon and fight more enemies, and at this point, I'm still getting used to the combat, but the movement in combat is something that just feels off in my opinion, and I can't put my finger on it, but I continue not taking the short rest because I'm a Chad. I beat a harder boss, and again, combat is just all over the place. I get slammed, I miss my attacks, it feels hard to actually connect without lock on. I get to this point where I don't have any potions and I literally have no health, and I'm literally trying to cheese this section and it's working. It was actually quite hilarious. This was the high point of my playthrough because enemies were actually attacking each other essentially with arrows but I kept baiting them and killing them one by one this big fat guy kept hitting his own uh, enemies or his own players or own people and here's where I was beginning to think I had some combat down pat I thought okay I just need to be a bit more patient which I did and I was definitely wrong which you will see later then I fight these enemies that are so annoying it reminded me of the combat in New World like some of their attacks were just so sudden it felt like I had no counter to them they essentially just flew around in the air and just had to con I just had to combo them down and I'll have more on that later once we get to a harder difficulty of this we then go through a series of elevators and we get to the final area of the dungeon the fight was fun but still I can't put my finger on what feels weird about combat the enemies have a few attacks that I have no idea what is happening but I power through and eventually kill the enemies and it's definitely starting to feel like I really need other people with me to make this feel more fair I finished the quest and it gives me notifications of loot that I got and everything and then the summary board of how I did
I get back to the camp and it teaches me about skill points essentially, but then I see I have to identify the armor and weapons that I got, which I thought was pretty cool. Some of the set bonuses are actually really nice and they look nice as well. This kind of excited me. I was like, hmm, this is probably pretty deep. But I started equipping new gear and I started looking really awesome. I'm like, okay, D&D, I get some animated pants and we all like animated pants. I also level up some of my skills and I check out the merchant upgrade guy or person. I then go into the journal and this is where the lore of the game is at. So if you're a D&D lore fanatic, then this is where you will go to read about it. I check out my feats, which are bonuses for my character and I get ready for a new mission. I try a new act on a higher difficulty to see what it's like. Starting out, I really start struggling a little bit with enemies, but I get to a short rest again. I decided to take it because I'm getting wrecked so far, but then I get to a point where I jump in poison because I wanted to get a crystal and I get stuck sort of and I die for the first time. This made me really salty because again, the controls and the movement are just so weird. So then we progress more and more and I'm getting shrecked. I'm being introduced into mechanics that I haven't seen before and I'm feeling more and more like I need a party. I get through and I finally get a short rest. Thank goodness. Then about an hour and a half in, I finally learned how to sprint, which is my error and I take the blame for that, but it was a nice realization. A lot of times when I play games, I like to figure out things myself. I don't know if that's dumb. I don't know if that's how other people play, but that's just how I play games. But anyways, we get to a really cool fiery area, which I think looks visually nice. When we get to there, I see some vaulting spikes later on, and I have nightmares of King's Fall Raid and Destiny. And if you don't know me, vaulting is not my thing. But anyways, we get to another fight in Poison, and I get knocked down a lot, which seems to happen a lot. And you stay on the ground for a long time when that happens. But we get the short rest, and I immediately get poisoned, and I am sad. Now, we get to the boss which has lightning and my screen goes blurry for some reason and I hate it. We have barely done any damage to this guy and he is wrecking me. Again, without lock on, it's just weird. But so many of his attacks just splash a lot and I feel like there's no way I can get away from him. So I die. Jeez. I go back to the drawing boards and again, I start the fight and I get in some hits without lock on and it just feels like half my attacks miss. Again, I'm taking insane chip damage. I go invisible and in stealth attack and it does absolutely nothing. And so I'm like, okay, what am I supposed to do? I get stun locked on the ground again, use my last potion, slide cancel around like Super Smash Brothers because this game's movement sucks and I have to compensate for not being able to use lock on and I die again. At this point, I'm pretty pissed. I go invisible at the start of the next fight because it didn't work last time so I thought hey I'll try it again I've got stone grinder to half health and I'm feeling good about myself but I don't know if you noticed but my lock on was on now I'm doing better but the camera angle keeps resetting every time I move or he resets so it's so disorienting literally every time I move forward it drops down and I'm actually getting physically sick. So I turn it off again, but I finally beat him. The game is extremely easier with lock on, but I couldn't do it for more than like 30 seconds. When lock on is activated, I did better. I just actually did better. I did it with my attacks, but I almost threw up. What is the balance? Who knows? I come back though, I get a cool cape, more feats and upgrades, and I'm like, okay, let's do this first mission on higher difficulty. So we go in and I try to do lock on again throughout the whole quest, and you will see when I do lock on, it has a white circle on an enemy. I try it, my camera messes up, I get disoriented. The whole mission, I try to do this essentially and it to make it easier for myself. Anytime you move forward, like I said, the camera resets. It is awful. I try to look at settings, but when I even turn certain ones off, it still doesn't help. I tried changing the field of view and made, it made me even more disoriented. What I'm gathering at this point is that the way that this game is designed just doesn't work. It's an action RPG that isn't top down. I mean, honestly, I haven't played any ARPGs that weren't top down, but I continue trying the auto lock or the lock on and again, it's just awful. But it's tough because it makes it easier to fight. I go and fight another boss and I get wrecked. Ice basically kills me because I dodge into it. God, dude. Dude, I I hate the controls. 
I didn't have a checkpoint, so I have to run past enemies, and I finally beat the boss after running past all those enemies. I then die again and run through everything again. I realize now how important checkpoints are. I then die again, and I have to go all the way back. I also play around with some controls to make it a little easier for myself. And then we finally get back to those little mage ghost things that I was telling you about before earlier, and they slap me around like it's no one's business. What? Oh my god. Gosh, bro. I die and I try again without auto lock, which again is a pain in the butt because you whiff so many attacks, especially Dritzed because he attacks so quickly. I eventually though beat them and take a short rest and I go to the final boss fight. After a long final boss fight that was very annoying, I actually die and I rage quit out of the mission because at this point I am about fed up with the game and for good reason. I mean, dude, like no, dude, I'm done. Yes. The combat is so annoying and it's one of the most annoying features in the game and it has to be also one of the most important features in the game. I like the feel of it. I like the sound of it, but the way that it operates and you execute it just flat out doesn't meld well in this style of game. I was explaining it to my friend that this game's first problem with combat is that it doesn't know what its identity is. It wants you to have combos. It wants you to almost hack and slash or have fast paced combat, yet it punishes you for super fast paced combat because you charge in and you get slammed down. And with that, it also punishes you because it isn't top down. Having fast paced combat style game is very difficult to maneuver when you can't see what's behind you. That's why in top down games, it's better to have that view because you need to move. You need to know where you're going and where you're dodging. It's almost how you usually don't play Elder Scrolls Online in first person because you can't see any mechanics behind you. But the way this game makes up for that is it's supposed to be easier with locking of enemies, right? It's supposed to keep them in front of you so you know who you're hitting. But it doesn't work because the camera angle gets disoriented. And every time you move forward, the camera just jerks down. That makes the lock on virtually unplayable and simply just sickening, like I said. I'm not joking. Every time I watch my combat with that, I get sick. I hope you haven't gotten sick yet, but all of these issues have made it to where I just don't like the combat. It feels clunky and it feels like it doesn't have an identity. So I thought maybe I should try multiplayer because again, I feel like I need help in this game. So I try three times to connect to a person's match and I am disconnected every time. I then want my friend to try with me, but then I realize he gets very motion sick and so I can't try playing with him. And then I had other friends that just didn't wanna play the game. And at this point, I just gave up playing multiplayer because I found an article online that says there is terrible connection issues and you need to essentially set up a private match to play with other people. And this pretty much sums up my experience with this game. It is a broken mess that really had a lot of potential, but just didn't hit the mark. The audio and the voice acting in this game isn't bad. The UI isn't too bad. The gameplay features besides combat seem like they worked, and I'm sure that the story has nice bits of lore in there, and the loot even seemed to look cool. But all of this is a waste, and it doesn't matter at all if you can't deliver on the core gameplay which is the combat and the ability to party up and play with other people. And so the fact that I couldn't even see my characters when first playing the game, the fact that the tutorial bug almost had me quit less than 45 minutes in, the fact that there's a disorienting lock on camera that doesn't work, the fact that it has potential to have my character progression wiped completely after hundreds of hours, the fact that the clunkiness of combat from angles and lack of identity, and then the fact to not even be able to connect to one lobby, all of that just plagues D&D Dark Alliance. The game has been out for basically a year, and it has these issues still. I know why these reviews are so mixed and poor, because it just has too many issues for an average gamer. Again, an average gamer isn't going to be patient enough to restart like I did. They will pick this game up and they will put it down within 30 minutes. And it's truly sad because I like some of the features in this game, but I just can't get over the biggest flaws. So is D&D Dark Alliance the worst RPG I have ever played? I don't know if it is. So we need to figure out and keep searching if there's a worse one out there. This is pretty bad, but this game actually has potential. And with some of the bug fixes, if they could implement those, I think this game could be decent. 
but I need your help to help me figure out if there is a worse RPG out there because right now this is a pretty bad RPG. So comment down below what you think the worst one is so I can try it out. Again, a massive shout out to my patrons and YouTube members. Remember, you can check out all the perks we have available there as well, but make sure to never, ever make a lock on mechanic like this in a game ever again. It is truly sickening. But I am Adam with Bro I Got This, and I will see you guys next time on the worst RPG series ever. Later, everyone. Peace. Yeah! <laughs>